We're collecting Keyblades and fighting the Heartless. That's right, it's Talisman Kingdom Hearts Edition from the Op. This IP-packed adventure game pits two to six players as characters from the Disney, Pixar, and Square Enix universes. Over the course of the game, they'll journey through the world of Kingdom Hearts, acquiring objects, recruiting followers, and attempting to seal the door to darkness. Setup begins with the game board placed center. The playing area is divided into three regions, outer, middle, and inner. Separately shuffle and place a face down draw deck for the blue adventure cards and the purple spell cards. Sort the red keyblade cards and the green purchase cards by type, then arrange them face up beside the board. Create a supply of adventure tokens, money, and fate tokens nearby. Each player now takes a character card, either randomly or by choice, and the associated plastic figure, along with a stat board. Each character card contains a character name and portrait, special abilities with setup instructions, starting statistics for strength, magic, and health, which should be set on the stat dials, starting fate tokens, which the player may take, and space below for followers and objects. Follow the setup instructions on each character board to determine if any player begins the game with spells, drawing them from the deck, or objects, pulling them from the purchase piles. Each player also begins the game with one money. The player who most recently played Kingdom Hearts goes first, with play proceeding clockwise. Gameplay occurs in turns, each divided into two steps, movement and encounters. First step in the movement step. The player moves their character figure along the board in any direction. In the outer and middle regions, this is resolved with a die roll, indicating the number of spaces the character may move. Players may not double back in a direction unless they're passing between regions. Characters may only move between regions as a result of an encounter or card effect. Movement in the inner region is limited to one space at a time, no roll required. Next, in the encounters step, when a player completes their movement on a space already occupied by another player, they may propose a trade of resources. Tradable items include money, fate counters, objects, and followers. Players are not required to offer or accept trades. After a character completes their movement, they must then have an encounter on that space. Depending on the icons listed, draw a number of adventure cards as indicated, subtracting one card for each card already on or linked to the space. Adventure cards for the outer region can be placed adjacent to their space. For the middle and inner regions, use the adventure card tokens to indicate that link. Adventure cards include name, card type, enemy stats, encounter text, and encounter number. Next, resolve the cards in order of encounter number. Depending on the card type, this encounter may be a fight with an enemy, a dynamic event, or even a gift. Combat needs some explaining though. First, determine the type of combat based on the stats of the enemy, either a strength fight or a magic fight. Then resolve the combat in the following steps. Evade. The character may first declare if they are using a spell or ability to evade combat, thus escaping the fight. If not, proceed to the next step. Spells, objects, and abilities. The character may use any of these to augment their strength or magic stat. They may also use one weapon object per attack roll. Asking for aid. If another character is on the same space, the active character may ask them for assistance in defeating the enemy. If the other player agrees, they will add up to three of their points in the respective stat to the active character's total for the fight. Attack roll. The active player now rolls one die and adds the result to their stat. Enemy attack roll. Another player now rolls the die for the enemy's attack roll and adds it to the enemy's stat. Compare attack scores. Whichever side has the higher value wins the combat. Ties result in a draw with no outcome. If the characters win, they collect a trophy in the form of the enemy card. If they were aided by another player, that player gains one money. Trophies can be exchanged at the end of a player's turn to either gain strength or gain magic, 
one point for every five points of attributes on the card. If the enemy wins, the characters lose the combat and each loses one health. If a character ever loses all of their health, they are defeated. They remove that character card and playing piece from the game. Thankfully, they may start anew with a different character drawn from the unselected options at the beginning of the game, keeping the objects, money, and followers, but losing the spells, trophies, and fate tokens. One note, when comparing attack score, the active player may pay one fate token to re-roll their attack roll. However, they must accept the new roll. The game continues with players moving around the regions, gaining strength and magic, and searching for objects and followers. Special rules exist for objects, followers, spells, heartless characters, acquiring keyblades, and specific locations on the board. Check the rulebook for details. Once a character moves into the inner region and uses a keyblade to access the door to darkness, they may roll a die to seal the door. They gain the die results worth the victory points and the game ends. Players then tally their victory points based on their positioning on the board. Each spell, follower, and object, every two money, and stat points gained during the game. The player with the most victory points wins. And that's Talisman Kingdom Hearts. I'm Becca Scott, and I get to reference Disney characters all episode, and there's no legal repercussions. <laughs> you can watch me and my friends referencing those characters on Game the Game right here on Geek and Sundry. Be sure and check it out.